welcome to another edition of your program, Harona, and I am Harona Dadrame. Today, my guest is Keba Makumba Jalo, disruptor, innovator, IT expert. Keba, welcome to Harona. Great pleasure. So, you know, Harona, traditionally, we start with childhood, growing up, your inspirations, education, expertise, experience, and we talk about current day Gambia. So let's begin. Childhood, pipeline, or banjo? Fajara. Fajara. Yeah. How was it? What's, uh, what do you remember of your childhood? It's, it was a, I had a great childhood. Um, raised in Fajara, going to private school, Marine International School. Mm -hmm. In those days, it was in Banjo, mm -hmm. where there was just a few number of people in our classes. Mm -hmm. And we... Few numbers, 15? No, below 18? 15. Uh, my class was around 10 to 11. 10 to 11? Yes. Ah, in that primary. was a luxury school then. It was a? Luxury school. My school used to be 50 in a class. Um, would, would you call it luxury or privileged school? Well, I'll, I'll go with your description. So it's privileged. Say, I would say privileged. Okay. So yes, uh, what else do you remember growing up? Well, growing up, I had an awesome childhood. I've always been actually a technical person. Mm -hmm. I would play with electricity in my home. And my mom would always go after me. Yang si kurang I always get electric shocks because I was curious. Mm -hmm. I would even open up VCRs and tell the television guy what was wrong with our VCR because he would sometimes even manipulate my dad and say this is wrong with it. Mm -hmm. So I would just go in the VCR and just say change this one, mm -hmm. like the robot or something, and he changes it and it works. So I've been I've, growing up. I've been very very technically inclined, and I've always had a vision of being an entrepreneur as a, as a young child. Up to even the age of 12, I can quietly remember. You always wanted to do business. But always, where is this inspiration from, you think? Inspiration of business, yeah. well, some of it came from my mom, and another of it came from Amadou, mm -hmm. Samba. Mm -hmm. um, growing up within these people, and Fisco Konata even as well. Growing up, I kind of saw that the best way in life it's not to work for anyone. It's to create things that would bring value to society, sustainable things, of course, mm -hmm. and benefit other people, change, to change people's lives generally. This is the way I've always looked at things, and this is the view I've always had in life. The technical inspiration that was just curiosity. Would you not say? I, I, would, I wouldn't say I owe my technical inspiration to anyone. Maybe my dad, as he bought us computer games at a very early age. Mm -hmm. uh, at the age of eight, nine, I already have a Commodore 64. Mm -hmm. Before even in high school, before going to high school, I see a PC in my house, an IBM compatible PC. Mm -hmm. um, I think these things also in inspired me. I've always thought technically and in the sense of engineering. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also identified earlier that that is not the direction. The, the direction is the business aspect of it or the way it can benefit people and society. So I'm greatly focused on that mostly than actually even educating myself from a university city standpoint as I did go to the Vrai Institute of Technology as well. Mm -hmm. Devry is one of the biggest private schools that actually do more practical work with experience mm -hmm. than a conventional university. Students from DeVry would just leave DeVry and go straight into the workforce and do not even need internships because of the infrastructure that was within the university settings alone. You could learn a lot in quick time. Um, I didn't graduate. Of course, I did drop out and I found myself building computers and making money in the IT industry at a very early stage. Because I do have a past experience with IBM as well as a system builder. Mm -hmm. um, used to sh build computers, ship them to Gambia. Mm -hmm. Later on, worked for Verso Technologies, mm -hmm. uh, network analyst, worked for Bell South, network analyst. I did a few certifications on just general industry knowledge on computer and telecommunications. Um, uh, basically, most of the things I've known and learned within telecom has been telecom, IT, and internet has been through passion. Passion of me. Passion driven. Passion driven. Research oriented. Research oriented. Um, these are the things that have driven me into knowing this industry. So much that I could even claim nobody knows this 
industrious generally around me more than me around you meaning in gambia more than you are becoming a local champion so to speak um maybe an on i've been an unknown local champion but i am a local champion um i wouldn't contest myself even across africa i mean if i say it correctly I can be a champion in Africa. All right, we'll come to your championship in the second half of this program. Yeah. But uh, tic tac, um, rounders, four corners, football, basketball, table tennis. What would you say as a child was your favorite game? Well, uh, I, I have not been that sports driven. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit of soccer, I did a little bit of athletics but I found sports to me at a very early age as a waste of time because I didn't see how it could benefit me as a person mm -hmm. but uh, did you do other than maybe the health side of it getting fit but I didn't see any other no way. but uh, what I wanted to say was do you do indoor games I see a lot of people prefer the scrabbles or chess or other games that are less physically demanding perhaps um, maybe you're lazy physically but mentally you're very no, active so actually, you wanted to actually, do mind I'm, games. I'm not lazy physically mm. um, games generally just don't drive me they don't even when it comes to the mental games games what what would you call a mental game a video game I, I mean, I mean I, no, I, maybe chess, maybe uh, Scrabble, maybe... I had video games, I would just give it to my young brother and my friends would play around it. I wasn't interested. So you, you kind of grew up fast, so to speak. Exactly. So you didn't do a lot, because a lot of, of people... Playing. Yeah. And at TV too, I, just, I do a little bit of that as well. I find television to be... So what the Wolof will say, Bon Mago, would, would that apply to you? Bon Mago... Like you just grew up fast, you became an adult when you were a child. I, I knew what I wanted very early. Yeah. And you still haven't deviated from that? No, I haven't. No, right. this, is, this is interesting. I haven't. It's been a challenge, but I haven't. Okay. Now, uh, we go back to your school days. You did drop out, but why? I, I, I found opportunity. In of the, making more money? Of making money at a very early age in the IT industry. I was, I'm a, I was in the Fulton County Business Incubator as well. My office was given to me by the mayor of Fulton County mm -hmm. um, with an office at Harrison Executive Square mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia. So the opportunities prevail itself and you're, selling, you're telling yourself, I'm in school to get a job eventually. eventually. If I have a job that I'm in school, let me just get out of school. Even though we want to encourage people to keep going to school, by the way. Yeah? Of course, we, we still need to hire them. <laughs> yeah. We need to hire them? Yeah. Why? What do you mean? Because once we create the things, but once we're creating things, if you create these things, who's going to drive them to success? So it comes to the saying that uh, the D and the E students end up hiring the A and the B students. Not always, sometimes. Um, there's a D student or an E student who is just naturally a D and an E student. But there is a D and an E student who is actually not a D and an E student. They're an A student uh, because I was not an A student. I was not a D or E student. I came first in Marina Common and Trans, third in the Gambia. That cannot be a D or a e, e student. Even if they had an E at some particular point in their life, it had to be deliberate. First in Marina? Yes, Marina International. And School. third in the whole country? In, in the whole country. Oh, impressive. Yeah. And this is the YAC uh, e uh, examination? Uh, primary six. Yeah. Okay. So you're an A student, you'll always describe yourself as an A student. Yeah. Well, you dropped out uh, by choice. Not I, because I didn't you like school, but exactly, it's by choice. Not because you couldn't... Uh, Achieve it. Yes. No, it was, it was a choice. This is a good place to take our first break. When we come back, more with Keba Makumba Jalo, disruptor, innovator, and IT expert. We'll be right back with Harana. Just a few moments. South Africa Global is pleased to launch Dalaba Housing Estate. Dalaba Housing Estate is our newest estate located on the Sukuta Jabang Road. You can buy a finished two or three bedroom house or service plots accompanied with a free fence and gate. At Dalaba Housing Estate, you get to enjoy bituminized roads, gated and fenced properties, solar street lights, 
water reticulation, public amenities, 1,500 fruit trees aligned in streets and many more. Make a 25% down payment today and spread the balance conveniently for 10 years with GD Bank, Echo Bank and Trust Bank. Terms and conditions apply. Wait, this is the best part. We are giving a discount on outright payments. For more information and exceptional service, please call our office line on plus 220-376-2333 or plus 220-776-2333. You can also visit our website on www.tafafricaglobal.com. Welcome back to Harona with my guest Keba Makumba Jalo. Keba, you know, we, we talked about your childhood growing up and uh, incidentally, I didn't know you came first in Marina for the primary six exams. That's quite impressive. So you've always had a brain somewhere. Now we talk about your industry, the IT sector in the Gambia. What would you say today are the biggest challenges in this industry? The, the biggest challenges in the industry right now is what you call artificial regulation. Artificial? Yes. Artificial regulation and unfair practices within the regulatory industry. Unfair? Let's start there. Unfair practices? Absolutely. Do you think there are big players that are subvented, that are just uh, exerting so much pressure on the smaller players? Or is it the regulation bit itself that makes it unfair? I, w I, I wouldn't consider anyone big or even small. I would just, uh, the regulatory environment needs to understand certain things. They need to understand li what is a licensed area and sometimes unlicensed areas or unauthorized or not unauthorized. That would be not a fair statement. The, uh, areas that don't need authorization, areas that don't need permit. We have a few industries. That Let's start with areas that you feel should be regulated. Let's start from there. No, licensed no, areas. No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't speculate about areas that I think should be regulated. That is the, the, the regulator's job. And there are certain things that just do not naturally fall into regulation generally. You have, for instance, you have the advent of VoIP, voice over internet protocol. Yes. Everybody uses VoIP. Mm -hmm. VoIP can, in regulation of VoIP, there might be rules that could be enacted maybe in parliament when you say VoIP for the benefit of some of the people that are watching us what do you mean in practical terms VoIP is a call that goes over the, is a voice audio for example WhatsApp go, for example what in practical for, for terms. example uh, Skype Skype okay WhatsApp is a VoIP application okay um, these are pure web application those two um, will be a typical VoIP, 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 gateway, right? VoIP gateways okay. aka sim boxes okay those are also VoIP applications um, these are industries that come, like I said, in an, it's, it comes naturally in a natural deregulation. It's a naturally deregulated type of application. Um, some countries do have rules. Even some of the rules have been found to be ruled with no good reasons, meaning that the ruling is even artificial. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fairest regulation that I've seen in the world so far is in the United States of America. I always like to use the, F, the Federal Communications Commission as a fair regulator, simply because mm. the regulation is rigorous and they rule based on also certain technologies. Mm. When the rulings are not in place, they don't touch it. They try to justify, review, and know which criteria it fits in what can we do with it and what can we not do with it? For instance, the past few weeks or the past month, I got a legal notice from Pura to bring to withdraw my guide tower and my Wi-Fi base station. I personally, as much as I know about regulation in Gambia as well, I know about the Information and Communications Act and the rules and the laws that guide information and communication systems, there is no guide that allows Pura to withdraw a mast or a guide tower. Pura does not simply even have a guideline on how to construct a tower. And even if that case is the, if that even exists, they don't even permit it. No regulator in the world rightfully 
justifiably permits towers and guide masks. These are done through environment agencies. These are done through. Um, Did you get? A, 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 these are done through aviation authorities. These are done through departments of lands that do the permitting. Exactly. And, 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 physical and planning, phys I was going to say. Physical planning. Physical planning. And really. what the regulator would rule is probably to rule a guide to go through these processes and get it done. A regulator cannot tell me in Gambia to paint my tower red and white when there's no rule. And there's no, there has to be a reason to play. To, the, the reason why FCC or a regulator somewhere or the NEA or the, the aviation authority like IATA says that there has to be a light on the mast. That is actually an IATA. Or but so is the red and the white. It's, it's an air, it's a air, air safety regulation. Yes. Yes. So no, now, so now. Your point about Pura, let's, let's clear this. Yes. I do know physical planning, even though a lot of people that have guide towers and or standalone antennas everywhere around the country may or may not know this, but physical planning actually does have regulatory rights and or permitting or not in areas where you're supposed to be able to erect masks and towers and areas where you're not supposed to. Not only even, just generally construction building structures. It's a, exactly. it's a civil structure, just generally any structure. Most Ex structures, even exactly. sometimes building a house, some people do not know that even building a house. No, needs, even a fence. A fence needs a permit from, 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 from physical planning. Yes, you do. Exactly. So that's where I was coming from. The implementation of the one that you talked about and uh, I have a problem where you talked about sim boxing. Oh, go ahead. As a void. Because I think sim boxing is a termination of services that were usually come with regular tele, uh, telecommunication. This is my view of it. And or redirecting and rerouting these calls through uh, and making money out of it and denying actual operators. This what, is, what is WhatsApp doing? Uh, WhatsApp is not generally making money out of the, 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 the regulatory point here, regulation is not a commercial, it's not commercial, one. Yeah. And WhatsApp wouldn't be giving a service and not make money out of it. There are different avenues of gaining your money. Okay. But WhatsApp disrupted the traditional means of telecommunications more than any application in the certainly. world. Certainly. If you look at the significant value of sim boxing or web GSM gateways, I would ethically and professionally call them, yes. which a sim box is part of a VoIP. It's part, it is part of VoIP. Okay. I have, I, I, that I'm not, it's a gray area for me. I, so no, I, will not push. I, I, I won't. I don't know. That is maybe you want to use the word gray area. That is something you don't know. I don't know. Yes, exactly. But it is. If you don't know it, I'm putting it to you. I'm putting it to, in fact, that a VoIP GSM gateway is part of a web operation. But simboxing is illegal in Gambia. No, it is not. Well, as far as I know... Simbox in, Simbox in general is not illegal in any part of the world. If, I, if they call Simbox illegal, it's artificial. If you do a Google search today, you type in illegal Simbox or Simbox fraud, you will not see it any de in any developed country as illegal or as a fraud, but only in African countries. Did we develop GSM gateways? Did we develop these networks that we are using? Who are we as Africans to allow the Europeans to, allow to for us to manipulate in our systems and call something that is a to call something or label something a fraud or illegal, which is not even lawfully fraud or illegal? This is coming from this is an opinion and a type of speculation that goes around so that they can sell their systems or whatever manipulation that they want, and it, it is that is not happening within their areas. If you type "simbox fraud" in Europe, you won't see anything about it on the news. You type but, it in, it, but it's everywhere in Africa. But everywhere in Africa. Why is Africa? Perhaps what? Europeans are not simboxing, are they? No, no, they are. The, the Europeans, the simboxes, cause the low rates in Europe. This is why it's so, so cheap to make calls in Europe. It costs nothing. If the consumers knew, knew the benefits of actually simboxes, they would be surprised. A simbox, from even, even from a regulatory standpoint, a simbox is better than WhatsApp and Skype. Do you know why? At least the SIM box operator or the VoIP GSM operator is a customer to the mobile operator. They are making money. On WhatsApp, no, they are not making any money. What money are they making? A little bit of money on data, it's a fraction. 
it is actually even more economically viable. No, when it comes to WhatsApp, a lot of people really connect on WhatsApp via Wi-Fi. But it's so but, 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 but this is what I'm saying. So even some of the operators are even losing. Yeah, exactly. WhatsApp is and it's it's okay. For why an, it's, why uh, are you a major advocate? For these areas to be deregulated. No, it no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no, they are not being regulated. Like I told you, these sectors. Why would yours be be dismantled? Uh, the, the, so the, the, no, no, no. Uh, it's called unfair practice, incompetent regulation, for that matter. A competent regulator will not behave in that manner. A competent regulator dismantled not my sim box or something they came to dismantle after two years the regulator has been into my premises even regarding sim boxes before with the police the police was my is my witness or even on that the regulator i asked them what about this this mast i have here because i knew something could happen tomorrow what about this mast i have here within the industry on an unfair practice what about the mast i have here and the wi-fi base station so no this is not a problem how come in two years ago it was not a problem and today it is a problem? It's a personal issue. It's got nothing to do with regulation. Certain industries are naturally deregulated, like I told you. VoIP is naturally deregulated. I'm not advocating for deregulation. It is naturally deregulated. Wi-Fi is naturally deregulated. In areas like the U.S., which is even better. I always like to use the US example and people will tell me, oh, but this is Gambia. I said, when you say it is Gambia, you even make my point more valid. At least the US has ruled part number 15 of the Wi-Fi radio to only transmit one, one watt of power. What ruling does Pura have? Nothing on Wi-Fi, which is an unlicensed frequency. You, you cannot regulate or attempt regulation on naturally deregulated products and services. I, I, and another question, mm -hmm. and I'm not another question, another statement. A SIM card that every consumer uses and a VoIP GSM gateway uses as a consumer or as a customer, how do you authorize that? How do you license a SIM card? It, that is natural, that's what we call natural deregulation. So what do regulators do that are backed by greedy operators that want monopoly? like the current situation in Gambia is an oligopoly. We just moved from an, a monopoly to an oligopoly. What do you mean? A monopoly is when one particular operator is controlling a particular type of industry. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, that is illegal. The World Bank demanded the government to respect deregulation. Liberalization what they're calling liberalization today, and what is a true liberalization? This is not liberalization. This is an oligopoly. All right. Well, I think this is a good point to take our second break. When we come back, final words with Keba Makumba Jalo. Stay with us. How do you see um, technical in Gambia, um, IT, its growth? How is it improving our lives? Is it bringing about change as far as the economy is concerned, as far as improving the lives of people is concerned? Um, you see, information technology is a very vital topic you were touching. Um, information technology or information communications technology, especially the internet, has the only capability of transforming people's lives. It's the only means of taking Africans out of poverty. Um, and this is what governments need to respect the most. They owe technology a lot of respect. 
traditional players. Yes, they have their rights to play. But are, what are they doing? They're not changing anyone's lives. They are ec based economical interest, mm -hmm. self-centered, and the world has changed into decentralized and democratized type of technology that can inclusive financially people to change their lives. It may be a threat, or it may seem to be a threat mm -hmm. to the traditional industries, but they don't have a choice but to accept it. Digital currencies are, of course, the future. Everybody knows that. How so? How? How so? How is it the future? It is the future. It's already being adopted by many people. The European Union itself is looking at ways on how to adopt a digital public currency. Even Senegal here, even Senegalese don't know that there are experiments going on in Senegal for what you call an ECFA, digital public currency, from the Central Bank, for the Central Bank of West African states. It is the future. It's going to make people access to finance easier. You don't even have to tra travel from point A to B for the person in Basel to receive their money. It doesn't cost money to do even, the, or it costs less money to do digital transactions. Cheaper than even mobile money. And it, it, is, it, it is also a currency which replaces the physical fiat currencies that we're in. If you asked me, email, mm -hmm. what email has done, the technology sector, has disrupted, all aspects of technology have disrupted some type of sector, some kind of way. Email disrupted the, the mailing systems, mm -hmm. the conventional mailing system. Mm -hmm. Postal services. Exactly. Wi-Fi itself has already, not today, has disrupted many types of communication systems. If in Africa, a SIM box didn't have economic value, it would have just played. Mm -hmm. If it was just able to take a lot of value out of them and not have any benefit value to the operator, it would have just played. I'm one of the pioneers of Wi-Fi here in Gambia. I installed Wi-Fi when Africa didn't even know Wi-Fi when I came back from the States. I introduced it to restaurants. I was doing, I promoted free Wi-Fi when in even the United States of America they didn't even talk about free Wi-Fi. Because I even, I had the opportunity to test Wi-Fi at beta stages with some Nortel equipment at the FC, at Fulton County Business Incubator. I'm very knowledgeable about the industry. Um, Gambia, we need to set an example. That's what I could say. We have moved from dictatorship to a transition. The transition, I could say, is not yet 100%. But we need to be different from Africa, all of Africa. We need to set an example. Because Ghana does this doesn't mean that Gambia can do it or should do it. If Senegal does this doesn't mean that Gambia can do it or Gambia should do it. We should stop using this example. I'm sick and tired of hearing Gambia and saying, for example, Kenya, for example, Rwanda, for example, South Africa. For God's sake, do you know that none of them is doing it properly? Let's set our own example. Let's respect the transition we are going through and let's transit, transition into democracy. Respect people's rights. Respect that people make a living and they make it in the right way. This is all I'm calling for right now. And um, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to sit here and voice out my opinion. Um, my opinion, like I said, is not only based on an opinion, or a, it's actually based on facts. And this... What do you see in the future? young Gambians interested in ICT, interested in uh, these transformative sciences, how do we make sure they're getting the baton right and they're running into the future to equal any other country in sub-Saharan Africa? It's up to the leadership. You people with the expertise, we would do our, with the we, knowledge, we, 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 how do you guide the I future? Would, people like us, we would continue doing what we are doing. We will never stop doing what we are doing. Um, we will adapt to more things. We are even working on an, uh, on an initiative right now, a non-government organization with collaboration with Microsoft on unlicensed domain again on television white space to serve the underserved economists as an, as an experiment. 
like I said, as an experiment. I've done a bit of research on that, and I found out that in Gambia, mm -hmm. the analog space has been vacated by you television stations. You're all... No, we are there. We're going digital. We have not vacated yet entirely UHF and VHF. I know television white space. It's an incredible technology. I, I, you, have I, not, you have not vacated? No, we haven't yet. Really? Yes. Okay. But you are working on vacating? Well, QTV is still on analog in some areas around the country. So is Paradise Which areas? TV. And so on, uh, they're on UHF. So they have several transmitters around the country. Okay. That is something that we would probably... Paradise Talk. FM is also, Paradise TV is also on UHF in some aspects, and so is JRTS. Well, this is great knowledge I'm getting from you right now. Well, I mean, when you say UHF, is this, is, this, is this the analog space? Yes. VHS and, uh, VHF and UHF are the analog space for television. Well, so TV white space will travel between these two bands, certainly. Yes, so that means it is, <laughs> it is still under the area unlicensed, provided that there is a TVWS database meaning that your spectrums will be on a database yeah. and declared unused ones would be, would be used to travel information through TV white space yes. as unlicensed. Exactly. Now coming back, um, if you would have final words in the one minute, what would you like to say? I, w I would like to tell, I would like to say um, we Gambians need to embrace technology, respect it and help and support to trans to use it and transform people's lives positively this is what i would say keba makumba jala thank you very much uh, it's been a pleasure having you on harona you too Arona. it was a great one thank you thank you